Jewish people in Israel and around the world are celebrating the Feast of Hanukkah or dedication these days. But did you know that the earliest written record of Hanukkah is actually found in the New Testament? In John 10, 22, we have the setting of what's taking place. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Yeshua was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The fact that Yeshua made the trip to Jerusalem for this festival tells us a ton. So before we go further, what are we actually celebrating in this winter feast of dedication? Around 200 BCE, Judea was being afflicted by the Greek rulers who were forbidding Torah study and worship at the temple. The Greek rulers became more and more forceful to Hellenize the Jewish people. And this persecution culminates with the rise of the evil king Antiochus Epiphanes, who desecrates the temple, enters the Holy of Holies, and makes the possession of the Torah a capital offense, burning every scroll he could find. He decreed the Jews were only to worship the Greek idols. But the Maccabees, a family of priests from Modi'in, stir up a revolt, refusing to worship the Greek idol. They eventually take Jerusalem back and begin the process of clearing out the pagan altars and reopening the Temple of God. As they finish up, their goal was to immediately resume sacrifice and temple worship. But as they go to Lachnoch, Hanukkah, or dedicate the temple, they find there's only oil for one day of the special ceremonial menorah oil. It would take eight days to make the new special lamp oil. And according to tradition, with only one day supply, they light the menorah in faith. And God sustains the flame for eight days until the new oil is made. This is the miracle of Hanukkah. So going back to the Gospel of John, you can imagine in Yeshua's day, knowing the trials our people were facing under the Roman rule, the Judeans circled Yeshua in the temple, Yeshua, this great miracle worker from the Galilee. If there was a perfect day to start the revolt against the Roman oppression, this was Hanukkah, this day. So unable to contain themselves anymore, they burst out. How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. They were ready to take arms, take the country back. Judah Maccabee didn't perform these great miracles or signs. I'm sure the expectations were higher for this one, who could feel the multitudes in the wilderness, who could heal the sick soldiers. Yeshua was the perfect Messiah to drive the Romans out. Their thoughts were like ours, continually on the kingdoms of this world, but deaf to the kingdom of God. Yeshua answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice, I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Yeshua turned the focus back again to our eternal state. His coming at this time was to defeat an enemy much more oppressive than the slavery of Rome, more wicked than Antiochus of Greece. His aim was defeating the bondage of sin, to give us not just a good life here on this earth, but eternal life, restoring our relationship with God. The trials we face today may fill us with worry about our freedoms being eroded by crooked leaders and a world in chaos. But while Rome could take your land, money, and freedom, no one can snatch you out of your Father's hand. Rome faded away, just like every kingdom of this world. But the kingdom of God is advancing today. The gospel has made its way to every nation, and revival had circled the globe and came back to Israel again. 
Now today in Israel, we are seeing awakening amongst the Jewish people. This happens today before our very eyes. So as we look to this Feast of Dedication, can we look at ourselves, look at our hearts and ask Yeshua to cleanse us from any idols in our hearts and that we would be dedicated to our King with our eyes set on the Kingdom of Heaven. Let's remember our King. He is coming back. He returns to this earth as the conquering King to save Israel and defeat the armies of darkness. Unlike the temporary victory of the Maccabees, Yeshua will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, that will never ever end. And so we say, Maranatha, come Yeshua. But today, come and rule and reign in our hearts.